Hi everyone. I'm sure by now you are aware of the rapid revision reignite that has recently been launched by Prep Ladder. Well, what remains the same are the concise video lectures for rapid revision both in English and Hindi. The Q bank has been updated, audio explanations have been added in both the languages, but what is the game changer truly are the new Q&A notes and as the name suggests, the question and explanation format of notes which have been designed primarily to help you in active recall. So, well, I received the soft copy and I decided to scan through the pages along with you. So, let's look through some top so that you get more clarity on what exactly are the Q&A notes. So we are going to select pages randomly. We'll just scroll through wherever it stops. We are going to discuss that topic. Let me see what remained the same. Let's assume I want to revise the macrophages and what are they known as in different parts of the body. So all of that has been put over here in the inflammation chapter in a tabular manner, which was there in the previous notes also. So for example, macrophages in the brain have been referred to as microglia. In the lungs, these are known as alveolar macrophages or dust cells. In the the liver, of course, we are all aware these are known as Kuffer cells and you get a question on the macrophages of the placenta where they are known as the Hofburg cells and as an integration between path and micro, you know that's the site where the Zika virus is going to attack. So now you've got all these volatile things in a tabular manner. Well, that's not it. Even in the previous notes and how we've upgraded further is that if you want to revise a certain topic in terms of images or if it's going to get too many image-based questions, then we've got all the images in a tabular format. So for example, you want to revise the giant cells. So firstly, we've got a question, what are the different types of multinucleated giant cells? And every giant cell with its image is given with its description and the disease. So for example, the Langhans giant cells, which are seen in TB, the Teuton giant cells, which have a reef-like arrangement, which are seen in lipid disorders like xanthoma. Then, of course, the famous foreign body giant cell, which has haphazard nuclei. We cannot forget the path micro integration that I always go ahead with. That is the warden finkelde giant cells, which are seen in measles. Let's assume you are revising the Reed-Sternberg giant cell, which is seen in Hodgkin's lymphoma. And we know that it shows the classical owl eye appearance. So as an integration, you also have the image of cytomegalovirus, which shows the owl eye appearance. And we've given the difference also. So that how Reed Sternberg cell will show pink color inclusions and cytomegalovirus will show blue color inclusions. So this is again a tabular format. But I guess many of these things you were seeing in the previous notes as well. How have we integrated the new question and explanation format? So let us scan through more pages so that we can actually get to, let's say, something from systemic pathology. So let's see if we'll be able to get till there. So let's assume I want to revise what are the different viruses and the different organisms that cause cancers. So I've started with a bacteria over here, H. pylori, which I know that it causes cancers. But in micro, I will be asked an integrated question of how H. pylori is stained or seen under the microscope and we know what are the special stains for H. pylori which is a question and the answer of course is the Warden starry silver stain which is known to give a black color and also a new stain called the modified Jimsa stain which is shown in the next image. Let's assume you want to discuss a virus. So now the next virus that has been given under cancers is of course the human papilloma virus which is known to cause squamous cell carcinoma especially in the cervix. So we've got so many questions on HPV year after year that have been asked and they have been put in a bulletized manner. So these are the different proteins that HPV has and every protein has a question associated with it. Like the L1 protein, what is that used for vaccine preparation? E4 and E5 are the proteins responsible for coelocytes. So if I ask you a question, what are coelocytes? So that's of course an explanation that you give by asking yourself that yeah, these are the ones which have a raisinoid nucleus and a perinuclear halo around them, the image of which has been given from a cervical pap smear over here. Let's assume I want to ask you what are the cancer forming proteins, then that of course is going to be E6 and E7. These are responsible for carcinogenesis. So now you understand how by asking yourself questions, you are an independent person who's actually studying with your notes. Till now, you have always either been dependent on the video lectures forever till the last day of the exam, because that is a kind of a passive learning that you are doing, or you are in search of a study partner with whom you can discuss. We have tried to make you independent by giving you a set of notes which can actually complement the video lectures and can be be a kind of a study partner for you. Because over here, if you're asking yourself, what is a coelocyte, then your mind starts processing that I have to give the explanation. If you start asking yourself the different proteins, automatically you start giving answers to it. So this is very similar to how you used to study during your school time, where you had questions written in one page, and then you used to cover the answers with your hand, and then you used to revise the answers in your mind. And that is exactly the active recall that we want all of you to do. Let's move forward. As I said, should we go ahead to a tough topic? Let's see where the next page is going to stop and let's scan further. So here it comes to anchor. So what are the questions on anchor that I would want to ask you? 
let's say what does anka stand for it's the very famous question anka is anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody so you would want to ask me how many types of anka and that's exactly the next question c anka and p anka then you're going to ask me the diseases associated with it but this of course anka means what the diseases that i'm associating with these are the small vessel vasculitis but i want to integrate anka with other subjects and other chapters so i've given you questions do you know any git disorder where p anka is noted of course that is ulcerative colitis do you know any liver disease in which p anka is elevated or is associated of course that is psc primary sclerosing cholangitis so now we realize that by giving a question answer format students were not missing anything students were not constantly dependent on the video lectures of course you have to go through the video lectures once or twice to clear your concepts but now let's assume you are a month and a half away from the exams you can't constantly be getting back to video lectures because they are going to be time consuming at the same time reading the notes can be a little boring let's be accepting to the fact and this is going to make it a little more interesting because it automatically fastens the space you become faster in revising your notes so you can ask yourself questions and automatically within a minute your one page is done let's move forward and see if we have any questions which could help us with hematology because that's also a topic which students have been going through and i'm just scanning through these pages only the reason being that i want you to see these pages once i want you to get a knack of exactly how the qne notes have been arranged how it has been made into tabular format into bullets the images are high quality images and alongside of course question and explanation so moving on to the next thing let's see if i have a question to do with hematology over here and yes in hemat i can see as soon as i saw the hyperpigmentation of the knuckles i know i'm on the page of megaloblastic anemia that is vitamin b12 deficiency so under the clinical features of course i can see hyperpigmentation written i can see pure vegetarians because that is where b12 deficiency is common in further they've asked you that what are the neurological manifestations with b12 deficiency we know that is sacd subacute combined degeneration then i want to integrate b12 deficiency with biochemistry so the next question is what metabolic reactions require vitamin b12 we know the classical metabolic reaction of converting methyl malonyl co enzyme into succinyl coenzyme that requires b12 and at the same time homocysteine to methionine also requires b12 so by doing question answer you are revising and you are also integrating it with other subjects let's go ahead and see the last topic where these notes are going to take us to and let's see if we are able to discuss something that's a little more tougher so i'll probably come towards the end and one of the last topics which are okay very important for inict i can see the image and i identified that we are on the page of flow cytometry so now they've asked you that in flow cytometry what is forward scatter what is side scatter and that is very clearly written forward scatter which is mentioned in this photo is depending on the size of the cell the forward scatter will be seen side scatter on the other hand in flow cytometry will be dependent on the complexity or the granularity of the cells next you want to ask me a previous year inict question that what are the different presentations or interpretation of flow cytometry what are the two ways one is of course going to be these dots which are shown over here so that is known as the dot plot analysis the other there are the graphs which i can see over here and this is classically known as the histogram and this was asked in the previous year papers so of course this was just a way of showing you that what are the different uh, changes that have been brought about about in these notes and of course i'm very very confident that this will help you in active recall and i'm trying to make you independent over here you're not dependent on a study partner to ask you questions you're not dependent on me to constantly log in and look at the videos again and again once or twice you clear your concepts and now you can revise independently with active recall you and your notes and that's where the story ends so of course it's going to save your time it is going to help in active recall and it is also going to help in longer retention I'm very excited to present these notes to you. I want your feedback on the same. And now that you've joined in and listened to me for five minutes, I always give a homework or I always ask you a question because you know now that you've spent five minutes, why don't you learn something and go? So if I ask you that, okay, one was a dot plot analysis and the other one that I saw over here was a histogram. For histogram, they have written that they have done something called EMA testing by this histogram method. EMA is a testing which is confirmatory for a particular type of hemolytic anemia, and that's the answer that you're going to give to me in the comments. below that for which hemolytic anemia ema eosin 5 malamide testing is now considered as the confirmatory method so i hope all of you have enjoyed looking at these notes and of course we are wanting your feedback so that's open in the comments and let us know what you feel about them thank you